Tomare loe hami hai no avatara Ami binna bando ke ache to mahara ani ke ashadi mai ha nasi bhara la hadi Hare Nama Maha Mantra Loto Me Maha Ki Hare Nama Maha Mantra Karane pare ya Te hari nama mantra Loi lama jiya Nittai gorari bo, hari bo, hari bo, nittai gorari bo. Premanande Haribo Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devin Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudirayat Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki we're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 1, Text Number 4. Naimishe Nemishakshetre Rishaya Shonakadaya Satram Swargaya Lokaya Sahasra Samam Ashata Naimisha Nimisha Shetre Rishaya Shonaka Daya 
Satram Swagaya Lokaya Satram Swagaya Lokaya Sahasram Asata Nimisha Nimisha Shetre Rishaya Shonakadaya Satram Swargaya Lokaya Sahasra Samamasata In the forest known as Naimisharanya. Animishashetre. The spot which is especially a favorite of Vishnu. Who does not close his eyelids. Rishaya, sages, Shonaka Adaya, headed by the sage Shonaka, Satram, sacrifice, Swargaya, the Lord who is glorified in heaven, Lokaya, and for the devotees who are always in touch with the Lord. Sahasra, 1000. Saman, years. Asata, performed. Translation, once in a holy place in the forest of Naimisharanya, Great sages headed by the sage Shonaka assembled to perform a great thousand year sacrifice for the satisfaction of the Lord and his devotees. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The prelude of the Srimad Bhagavatam was spoken in the previous three slokas. Now the main topic of this great literature is being presented. Srimad Bhagavatam, after its first recitation by Srila Sukadeva Goswami, was repeated for the second time at Naimasharanya. 
All right, so the first three verses were the, the prelude, or the, we could say the invocation to describe what's going to be taught in the course of the Srimad Bhagavatam. There was the glorification of Lord Krishna, and there was also the result of hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam. So now, the actual subject matter of Srimad Bhagavatam is beginning with this fourth text. And we're hearing that this uh, first canto begins with the talks between Shonaka, who is the head of the sages, there are actually thousands of sages who had all come to Naimasharanya to hear the Srimad, well, actually they didn't just come to hear Srimad Bhagavatam, but they came to perform sacrifice because there was, they wanted to perform a sacrifice because they knew Kali Yuga was beginning and they knew Kali Yuga is an inauspicious time. So they wanted to perform a sacrifice for the benefit, for the well-being of the world. And at the same time, they took advantage to question, and, you know, they elected one person to sit on the Vyasa San. They elected one person to sit on the Vyasa San and to answer the questions of the sages. And we'll hear in this first chapter, uh, uh, there are six questions put by the sages. So this first chapter is in, entitled Questions by the Sages. So we'll hear these questions one after another. Anyway, uh, Srila Prabhupada points out that this is the second recitation of Srimad Bhagavatam. Or we could say actually it was spoken before, but this actual Srimad Bhagavatam, Sutta Goswami, Sutta Goswami is going to reply to the questions of Shonaka. And Sutta Goswami, he heard the Srimad Bhagavatam from Shukadeva Goswami. When Shukadeva Goswami spoke Bhagavatam to Maharaj Parikshit, at that time, we said Narada Muni was there, Vyasadeva was there. There were many people came to hear. And among them was Sutta Goswami. So this Sutta Goswami later on, he came back to Naimasharanya and he was elected to speak here. Uh, Prabhupada's purport continues, in the Vayaviya Tantra, it is said that Brahma, the engineer of this particular universe, contemplated a great wheel which could enclose the universe. The hub of this great circle was fixed at a particular place known as Naimisharanya. Similarly, there is another reference to the forest of Naimisharanya in the Varaha Purana, where it is stated that by performance of sacrifice, at this place, the strength of demonic people is curtailed. Thus, Brahmanas prefer Naimisharanya for such sacrificial performances. So it's a place of sacrifice. You can go there today, Naimisharanya, it's well known, it's in Uttar Pradesh. It's not very far away from Ayodhya. So it's in northern India, and uh, it's a forest, a lot of trees there everywhere, and uh, there's also a big uh, kund in the form of a wheel, and it's actually said the center of that kund is bottomless. They tried to find out, people came, uh, Europeans came there, they tried to measure the depth of the kund, and they gave up. 
they couldn't find out. It's like bottomless. So described here how this Naimisharanya is situated at the hub of the universe. And the universe is in the form of a great wheel. And that Naimisharanya is the hub. And so at that place, because it's a very holy place, the, the, the power of demonic people is curtailed. They don't have any power when they come in that holy place. So it's a very good place to perform sacrifice. And people will go there, bring their children. You know, you're going to do head shaving. You know, when the child is young, they want to do the, the, the head shaving of the child or maybe Anaprashna, different sac different rituals are done there. Even today you see there's many brahmanas there and they're doing the different rituals. The visitors come, they want to do some kind of yagya. So they go to Naimasharanya. You want to do some yagya? You can go. Hmm? Prabhupada says, the devotees of Lord Vishnu offer all kinds of sacrifice for his pleasure. The devotees are always attached to the service of the Lord, whereas fallen souls are attached to the pleasures of material existence. In Bhagavad Gita, it is said that anything performed in the material world for any reason other than for the pleasure of Lord Vishnu causes further bondage, for the performer is enjoined. For, for the performer. It is enjoined, therefore, that all acts must be performed sacrificially for the satisfaction of Vishnu and the devotees. This will bring everyone peace and prosperity. So Bhagavad Gita, Yajna Tarkamana Yatra, Loko Yam Karma Bandana, Sajatam Karma Konteya Mukta Sangha Samacharan. Right? You know the verse? Third chapter, Karma Yoga. Work done as a sacrifice for Vishnu has to be performed. Otherwise that work binds one to the material world. So everyone has, to, if you don't work for the pleasure of Vishnu, then your work will simply bring karmic reaction. You're working under the modes of nature, right? If you're not working for the pleasure of Vishnu, then you're working under the modes of nature and you'll be bound by the reactions of the material energy. So Srila Prabhupada is making that point and he's referring to this verse in the Bhagavad Gita, which I just quoted to you. The... Uh, The great sages are always anxious to do good to the people in general. And as such, the sages headed by Sonaka and others assembled at this holy place of Naimasharanya with a program of performing a great and continuous chain of sacrificial ceremonies. Forgetful men do not know the right path for peace and prosperity. However, the sages know it well, and therefore, for the good of all men, they are always anxious to perform acts which may bring about peace in the world. They are sincere friends to all living entities, and at the risk of great personal inconvenience, they are always engaged in the service of the Lord for the good of all people. Lord Vishnu is just like a, a great tree and all others, including the demigods, men, 
Siddhas, Charanas, Vijadharas, and other living entities are like branches, twigs, and leaves of the tree. By pouring water on the root of the tree, all the parts of the tree are automatically nourished. Only those branches and leaves which are detached cannot be so satisfied. Detached branches and leaves dry up gradually despite all watering attempts. Similarly, human society, when it is detached from the personality of Godhead, like detached branches and leaves, it's not capable of using, it's not capable of being watered. And one attempting to, to, to doze it, and one attempting to do so, is simply wasting his energy and resources. So Srila Prabhupada is pointing out the necessity of working for the pleasure of Lord Vishnu. Without working for the pleasure of Lord Vishnu, then we're simply wasting our energy. Srimad Bhagavatam also says, Dharma Shahi Apavargashyanat. Duties executed by all men are only so much useless labor if they do not provoke attraction for the personality of Godhead. So the purpose of everything we do is meant to help us to increase our attraction for the Lord. If we're not working for his pleasure, then we're working for our own sense gratification. And that the pleasures of the senses is very limited and temporary. We get pleasure for some time, but it does not last very long. We're always trying to get more pleasure. We want more, but we, we find it more and more difficult. So the nature of material pleasure is doesn't satisfy the soul. To satisfy the soul, we have to connect to the Supreme Soul, Lord Sri Krishna or Lord Vishnu. So Prabhupada gives an example. He said, Lord Vishnu is like the tree and all the leaves and branches, they are like all the different living entities. And Prabhupada talks, not only human beings, but the beings in the higher planets, the Siddhas and the Charanas and the Vidyadharas, all these different demigods and people in higher places in the universe, they are also like leaves and branches of the tree. So to satisfy the tree, you have to put the water on the root. You cannot water the leaves and branches. When we water Tosi, it's not, it doesn't do any good to pour the water on the leaves. If you simply water the leaves, then one day the leaves will fall off, they'll all drop off. But if you water the root, then the tree is nourished and all the leaves and branches enjoy. And the other example of a similar nature to this analogy is the body. You feed the stomach and all the parts of the body get energy and are satisfied. You want to put energy in your hands, you want to put energy in your legs, you cannot feed the hand, you cannot feed the leg, you have to feed the stomach. You put the food in the stomach and the stomach digests the food and distributes the energy to all the parts of the body. So sometimes, of course, we go on strike and the stomach says, I'm not, or, or the hands say, I'm not going to put any more food in the stomach because he's getting all the food. I'm not getting any food. I'm just putting the food in the stomach. I'm not going to feed stomach anymore. 
And so then, of course, you don't feed the stomach, then the hand doesn't get any energy after some time. And the hand, well, hey, what's wrong? Why I'm so weak? Because you didn't put the food in the stomach. In the same way, because we did not satisfy the Supreme Lord, the Lord of the creation, therefore we feel lacking. We feel we're missing something. We're, we're not complete because we did not work for the pleasure of the Lord. So we, are, we, we miss out. We don't get that real happiness, real satisfaction, which we are longing for. So, very important, we have to do sacrifice. Sacrifice. Actually, everyone's doing sacrifice. Mother is sacrificing for her children. The working, cleaning, and washing, cooking for the children. And, and soldiers are sacrificing for the country, working to protect the country. And the, the farmer is sacrificing to care, to care for his animals. Everyone is doing some sacrifice, but we have to perform the sacrifice for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord that we are all his parts and parcels. So the sacrifice is meant to be the yagna by Vishnu. The yagna is meant to be done for the pleasure of Lord Vishnu. And in the Kali Yuga, there's only one yagya can do, right? The only yagya which can be done in Kali Yuga is Harinam Sankirtan, right? The Sankirtan, the chanting of the holy name. Kali Yuga Dharm Hari Nam Sankirtan Krishna Shakti Vininai Tara Prabhatan That we have to have the energy of Krishna, the potency of Krishna to chant the holy name and to do the Sankirtan Yagya. All of the other Yagyas, you know, we do the Puma, light the fire and everything, people, it looks nice. But the real benefit comes from the Hari Nam. From the Sankirtan, Prabhupada was installing the deities in Vrindavan and the, it, Prabhupada told them, he said, go to the pundits and ask the pundits to come and do the deity installation. But Prabhupada wrote in the purport, he said, actually the real deity installation wasn't done by these pundits who came and did the yagya. He said, the real installation was done by the devotees because they were chanting the holy name. And so in the, in the Kali Yuga, the real yagya is this chanting of the holy name. And Lord Chaitanya propagated this. He, his, of the external purpose for the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was to establish the Yuga Dharma, which is the chanting of the holy name. Right? It's stated in Srimad Bhagavatam. Krite yad dayato Vishnu. In the Satya Yuga, the process was meditation. And then, uh, Trita yam parikhan makai. In the Trita Yuga, the process was to do yagya. And then, dwap, dwaparam. Huh? Dwaparam, the, the verse is dwa, Dwaparam. Oh, I'm forgetting. Anyway, Kalo, Kalo Tad Dari Kirtana. Kalo Tad Dari Kirtana. In the Kali Yuga, you have to do Kirtan, the chanting of the holy name. Dwapara Yuga, it, the process was to serve the lotus feet of the Lord. So in each age there's a process, in the Kali Yuga the process is the chanting of the holy name. All other processes, they may look good, but you don't get much benefit. People sit and meditate, but you, you have to meditate for thousands of years. In Kali Yuga you don't have that time. And we don't have the money to do the yagyas which they did in other ages. And our deity worship is very lacking. We follow so many, there's so many rules and rituals to be performed in deity worship. 
we can only try to do these things. But Kirtan, Kali Yuga, Dharma, the Ten Kirtan, that can be done. Anyone, anywhere, anytime, any place. So the Kali Yuga is an ocean of faults. But the one good thing is that simply by Kirtan, Srimad Bhagavatam says, uh, uh, no, uh, I'm forgetting all my verses here. It says that, that the age of Kali is an ocean of faults. But there's one good thing about it, that simply by Kirtan, one can cross over the ocean of material existence. So, these sages, they've come to perform sacrifice. It's not yet Kali Yuga, but they know Kali Yuga is just about to come. Because they know Lord Krishna had been present on the planet and he had departed. So they want to know where are the religious principles to be found. That's one of the questions which they ask. You'll see the state is one of the six six questions. The, they ask you, where are all the religious principles? When Lord Krishna was present on the planet, he is the personification of religion. But now he's departed from the world. So where are all the religious principles to be found? So Sutta Goswami will answer. And he will explain that, uh, that the persons who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness of the age of Kali will get light from the Srimad Bhagavatam. So this Srimad Bhagavatam is where people can get uh, their religious principles from. The Srimad Bhagavatam is the literary incarnation of Lord Krishna. All right, and then a little bit more Prabhupada's purport. The modern materialistic society is detached from its relation to the Supreme Lord. And all its plans which are being made by atheistic leaders are sure to be baffled at every step, yet they do not wake up to this. So Prabhupada is pointing out how the modern leaders are often atheistic. They may make a show of some religion, but ultimately... Ultimately, they're, they're atheistic. They don't really um, <laughs> believe in God. But they make a show. They'll make a show of these things just to impress pious people, to win their votes. So they make plans. They make plans. They don't make plans to please the Supreme Lord. They simply make plans for sense gratification. They make plans to get more money from the people, to take more taxes, taxation, the level of taxation. It said in the Srimad Bhagavatam, as Kali Yuga, Kali Yuga progresses, the level of taxation will increase more and more. And it will become such a burden for people that eventually people will just go and live in the forest, that they'll be unable to live in the city will no longer be able to survive. And you can see every day more and more taxation. This tax, that tax, everywhere in the world is there. There's very few places where you can go, where you can escape taxes. And so they're taking all the money for their sense gratification for this for the sense gratification of the, the people. They don't know 
how to live in harmony with the plan of the Lord, to recognize the Lord as the proprietor and to offer worship to him. If they did that, then they could see that how the world would become peaceful and prosperous. Of course, not every country is religious. There's a lot of atheism in the world. I was telling you about how the communists, in communist countries, they say religion is the opium of the people. And they don't encourage people to be religious. So they don't want, and even in Western countries, you know, sometimes people think in Western countries everyone is religious. Not true. There's a lot of atheism in the world, even in the Western countries. In the USA, there was a politician, one woman politician, she took prayer out of the school syllabus. They used to pray every day in the school. They had prayer every day. They made it it was the law. But then this politician said, no, this is very wrong. People shouldn't be forced to believe in God. They should be able to make their own decisions. And she got the bill passed in the parliament or in the congress. And they stopped, play they stopped prayer. They took it out of the schools. And they said, yeah, you just pray on your own. We don't want to force you to believe in any religion. And so this atheism is very prominent. More and more, even in universities, people are supposed to be there for higher education. Some devotees I know, they study in Australia, in the National University, the, the leading university in Canberra, in the capital of Australia. And they told me they had a program for Krishna devotees. But they said after the program for Krishna devotees finished, the next group to come into the hall was the Atheist Society. And the Atheist Society came and, you know, they were looking and they were sneering and ridiculing, you know, they were mocking everything the devotees were doing. And so nasty, disgusting people. And that's a university. But they allow things like an atheist society. And there was, there was a thing in London, some atheist society, they put a big slogan on the bus telling people why you don't believe in God, and it's just superstition, and there's no God, nobody ever saw God. Some atheistic propaganda. They were putting on the side of the bus one bus, one bus driver said, I'm not going to drive this bus. He said, and this is, I don't want to promote atheism. So he was a pious bus driver. <laughs> but still, the atheists, they're so, they've got so much money and power, and they can make the kind of atheistic propaganda against God. Okay, final paragraph. In this age, the congregational chanting of the holy name of the Lord is the prescribed method for waking up. The ways and means are most scientifically presented by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And intelligent persons may take advantage of his teachings in order to bring about real peace and prosperity. Srimad Bhagavatam is also presented for the same purpose and this will be explained more specifically later in the text. So, uh, Prabhupada is referring to Lord Chaitanya how Lord Chaitanya's mission is to propagate the chanting of the Holy Name. In the 11th canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, it describes how the nine Yogendras met with Maharaj Nimi. And Maharaj Nimi wanted to understand, he wanted to know who are the avatars in each age. 
because he knew the Lord comes in each age. There's yuga avatars. So he wanted to know who is the who are the yuga avatars. So Karabhajana Muni, who is one of the nine yogendras, he explained about the four avatars in, the, in each age. And when he came to Kali Yuga, he told, Kalaya dosha nidei rajan, astihe ko mahaguna, kirtanat eva krishnasya mukta sangha parambraja. In the Kali Yuga, the Lord will come. Uh, Krishna, Krishna Varnam Tavish Akrishnam Sango Pangrista Parshadam Yagnai Sankirtan Prae Yajantihi Sumedasa. This is the verse. Krishna Varna means Varna means occupation. So Krishna Varna occupation will be Krishna chanting the name of Krishna and speaking about Krishna. This will be the activities of the avatar in the Kali Yuga. Krishna Varnam Tivesh Akrishnam. He is Krishna, but he is not colored black. Krishna means blackish color, but he is Akrishna. He is not black. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna, but he is not black. He is gold, golden color, right? He is Goranga. Right, because he comes in the mood of Srimati Radharani. So to experience that Radha Bhav, he is black, he's Krishna, he's black inside, but he's become golden outside because he's cultivating this Radha Bhava. So Krishna Vanam Tavish Akrishnam Sango Pangrishta Parshadam Yagnai Sankirtan Pray. He's coming to perform Sankirtan with all of his associates, with his Madanga and Kartals, and they're chanting the holy name all together with the, his associates, the different devotees. Yagnai Sankirtan Pray, Yajantihi Sumedasaha. Sumedasaha. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna talks about Alpamedasaha. Alpamedasa, those who worship the demigods. Antavattu palamtisham tadbhavati alpamedasham. Right? Those who worship the demigods, they're described. Antavattu palamtisham, the fruit of that worship will be limited and temporary. Antavattu palamtisham tadbhavati alpamedasham. So people of medasa means intelligence and alpha means very meager, very small, insignificant. They have very little brain, no good intelligence. They will worship the demigods, the devas, to get results which are limited and temporary. But the Sankirtan Yagya is done by those who are sumedasaha. Sumedasaha means who've got purified brain. Their brain is purified by chanting the holy name and by hearing about Krishna. So they have good intelligence. They will take part in the Sankirtan Yagya. People think, oh, oh this is foolish. Go in the street chant, sing, dance, they don't understand how powerful that process is, this process of Sankirtan. Lord Chaitanya describes in the Shikshastikam the benefits of Sankirtan. So that's why he says, Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtan. He says, all glories to the Sri Krishna Sankirtan. Why? Because Cheto Darpana Marjanam. It cleanses the heart of all the dust accumulated for years together. Right? The heart is like a darpana, like a mirror. So in the heart, we have so many things, dirty things there in the heart. And the chanting of the holy name, it will cleanse all the heart. 
Just like the mirror gets so much dust, you have to clean it. You have to regularly, we have to clean the heart. And we clean the heart by the chanting of the holy name. So, Cheto Dapana Marjanam Baba Maha Dabarni Nirvapanam. It extinguishes the blazing fire of material existence. Blazing fire, just like in the forest sometimes, in the summer, in the dry season, the bamboo rubs together and the bamboo will produce sparks. And the spark from the bamboo will make a forest fire. And it begins a little fire and the little fire, because it's a forest, becomes a big fire. So, Baba Mahadavadni Nirvapanam, this chanting of the holy name, it extinguishes the blazing fire of material existence. Our material existence is like being in the blazing fire. When there's a blazing fire in the forest, how to put out the fire? You need the rain cloud. Without the rain cloud, you never put out the fire. Very difficult. Sometimes they have big fires in Indonesia and so much smoke coming all the way to Malaysia because it's such a big fire. Without the rain, you cannot extinguish the fire. So material life is like the blazing fire. How to extinguish it? We need the rain cloud. Where does the rain cloud come from? Samsara dava nala vida loka, right? The, the spiritual teacher is bringing the rain cloud. He's bringing the mercy. Whose mercy? Krishna's mercy, right? The cloud gets it, gets, it takes water from the sea and it brings the water, pours it on the fire. The same way the spiritual teacher brings Krishna's mercy and he delivers the mercy to Krishna. So, Baba Mahad Tavagni Nirvapana Shreya Karaiva Chandrika Vritarana Vijabhadu Jivana Vijabhadu Jivana It is the life of all transcendental knowledge. Vijabhadu Vadu means wife. Jivana the wife, and jivanam, the life, the wife, the life of all transcendental knowledge. Uh, anandan buddhi vardhanam, it gives us bliss. We feel the pleasure, we feel the happiness in chanting the holy relief from the material energy. Anandan buddhi vardhanam pratipadam purnam ritaspadanam. Sarvat masnapanam. Sarvat masnapanam. It, it's a bathing of the soul. It pure, it, it's like that. It gives us a taste of the nectar for which we are always anxious. So in this way, Lord Chaitanya lists eight different benefits which are received by the chanting of the holy name, by performing Sankirtan. So we, we're always trying to propagate the Sankirtan movement. Lord Chaitanya said, Priti Viti Ajiyat, Nagar Adigram, Sarvatra Prachahai Be Moranam. The holy name will be chanted in every town and village. We have to spread the Sankirtan movement. There are many places to go to distribute the holy name and encourage people to chant. So this is the real Yajna. So Naimisharanya, 5,000 years ago, all the sages went there because they knew Kali Yuga is coming. Very inauspicious time. We have to do something to counteract it. What could they do? Yajna. They did Yajna. And they did also Kirtan because Srimad Bhagavatam, that was their Kirtan. Hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam. Kirtan is not only Kolan Kartam. Talking about Krishna, that is also Kirtan. 
satatam kirta yanto mam yatam tas chadra dhavrita. The great souls are always chanting my glory. So discussing topics of Krishna saves us from the effects of Kali Yuga. Any question? Any comment? Well, this is the place of Lord Vishnu. It said this is one of the favorite places of Lord Vishnu. So Lord Vishnu is known as Animisha. He doesn't close his eyes. Even when he's laying down, he doesn't close his eyes. Lotus eyes. We like to meditate on the Lord. So the Lord keeps his eyes open. And it's one of the names of the Lord Vishnu. So it's indicating that this Naimisharanya is a favorite place of Lord Vishnu. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Huh? Well, keep practicing. Just try to increase your practice. Try to do more. Do more chanting, do more hearing. Did you take the Bhakti Shastri course yet? Are you initiated yet? Did you do the disciple course? Well, first thing you have to do is the ISKCON Disciple Course. That's very important. They're arranging it because there are several devotees here. They have to take the Disciple Course. So you should also attend the Disciple Course. And then you will learn about the procedure of initiation and what's required. And you will learn how to select a spiritual teacher, what is the qualification of the spiritual teacher and you will learn also about the structure of ISKCON, how it's managed. And so it's a very useful course. It's only a few days. You can do it online also if you want. If you prefer, you can do it online or you can do it in Tamil also. And they have it in different languages. But you need to do these things. Take, the first thing is you should take the ISKCON Disciple course and you should be thinking about increasing your practice, you should think about initiation and you should think also about studying the Shastra, the Bhakti Shastra, Bhakti Shastra course, very important. Bhakti Shastra, yes, you study the Bhagavad Gita. You have to know the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is the ABC, the beginning. The Srimad Bhagavatam is higher study. The Bhagavad Gita is more basic. So you have to get the basics first. Bhagavad Gita, Ishopanishad, Nectar of Instruction, and the first part of the Nectar of Devotion. So these, this course is very important. If you haven't done it, and especially if you're thinking about going for second initiation, you need to do the Bhakti Shastri course. Before you can actually be really qualified for the Bhakti, for the second initiation, you should study the scriptures. Because we don't want Brahmanas who are illiterate. <laughs> right? Brahmanas should know. You should know Brahman, you should know the Shastras. Brahmana is not just to ring the bell. They have to know the scriptures. 
But they have to know slokas. They have to learn some slokas and things. So these things will, will they will help you to advance. So you will associate with other people who are also trying to advance. And so you take these courses, it will be very good for you. Huh? How to what? Well, you want to experience the highest thing. You have to be more qualified to experience the Madhurya Bhav. You have to be more in knowledge. That's yeah, that's the that's at the very top. You want to experience the highest thing. Yeah. We don't give we don't give uh, what, what do we call it honorary degrees, you know. <laughs> you have to study. You want to get the degree without studying. You want to enjoy the highest thing. You want to, you, first you should be qualified, and then you can think about these things. But as you say, you're new, so there's so many things to be learned. So don't jump to the top. You have to go step by step. And to come to Madhurya Bhav, you have to get rid of all the anarthas from the heart. And so, to get rid of all the anarthas from the heart, you have to do sadhana bhakti. You have to follow the different rules and regulations. And you have to accept a spiritual teacher. And when you're guided by the spiritual teacher, then he can help you to get Madhurya Bhav. Okay. Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam ki Srila Prabhupada ki Lord Premanandi What is this one? What is what is this one? The order design will become the dome. The dome. The dome. 